So now we'll be starting off with this idea of gravitational force and how do we actually calculate, how do we put numbers to this force. So the infamous Apple experiment in which the Apple fell on Isaac Newton's head is uh, something that all of us are familiar with. But what Isaac Newton did also discover and what he also realized was that it's not only the earth which attracts all the masses, actually all masses attract each other. So this is something which we call Newton's law of gravitation, right? Which basically uh, quantifies this force of attraction between masses. So this is what Newton's law of gravitation says really. So what Newton discovered was that the gravitational force was directly proportional. So you can also just say proportional means the same thing. So it was directly proportional to the product of the masses. the masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. Right, so separation really means the distance, but if you just write distance in your exam, you would lose marks. And the idea is that when Newton formulated this law of gravitation, he was basically referring to something which are called point masses. Now what does point mass mean? So the idea of point masses is simply this, that you can assume that all the mass is concentrated at one point. Right? Basically, you can assume that, for example, if you're talking about a sphere, you can say, uh, just to simplify this and to apply Newton's law of gravitation there, you can say that all the mass is concentrated at one, at one point. And for uniform objects, that will be taken to be the center. And we'll come back to this in a while, but first, let's go ahead and talk about this. So the gravitational force is directly proportional. Just a second. So this is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the separation, right? So basically what this law is trying to tell us is if we take two masses M1 and M2. So let me just scroll down here. So if you have these two masses, let's call this one M1, let's call this one M2. And again, we're assuming point masses because that's what Newton's law assumes that we're talking about point masses. And let's say that these centers are where the mass is concentrated. And these centers are separated by this distance of R, right? So let's say this distance between them is R. So uh, putting the, putting this into numbers, what Newton's law of gravitation says is that the force is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation, right? So the word that we'll be using most is uh, the separation, right? You can also use the word distance, but then it must be clear that the distance is between their centers because that's uh, what we assume when we talk about Newton's law of gravitation, that each of these masses can be taken to be point masses. So this is what the equation looks like simply in terms of the proportionality. Uh, this is uh, pretty basic stuff that to remove the proportionality sign you need to multiply by a constant of proportionality. So this equation would become G M1 M2 upon R square. Right? M1, M2 and R now we know and G is called the gravitational constant and the value is given to you in your formula sheet. This is equal to 6.67 into 10 to the negative 11. And just using the homogeneity of equations, if you find, if you make G the subject of this equation again, you can also figure out this unit, right? So that would be F times R squared upon M1, M2, and you can also find out these units. 
Anyway, those are given to you and this is pretty easy stuff. So you can do this on your own as well. So now we have one complete relationship which can actually give us the gravitational force. And just the way that I talked to you guys, I told you that all masses attract each other. But because for small masses, the force is so small that it is not very noticeable. And you can also see this just by this constant, right? So let's do an example and soon uh, you'll be able to see why I was saying that the forces are too small to be noticed. So for example, if I want to calculate the gravitational force between two adults, right? And obviously, if you also look at the formula, we also need the separation between them. So let's say that these are standing one meter apart. So what would be the gravitational force? Obviously, uh, now we know the gravitational force is always attractive. So what would be the force between them? So if we use this formula again, so F equals g m1 m2 upon r square so g is 6.67 into 10 to the negative 11 the masses of both these adults let's take these to be a standard 75 to 80 kg so let's take this to be 75 for one adult and also 75 for the other adult and the distance between them is one meter so the square of one which we know will turn out to be one so this answer if you calculate this turns out to be 3.75 into 10 to the negative 7 newtons right so you can also write this as 0.375 micronewtons so you can see that obviously this force is very small to be uh, experienced to be observed but this force is actually much more observable when we're talking about very large bodies right so celestial bodies like stars and planets so then this force is much larger and that's what our second example will be so now we are going to calculate the gravitational force between Earth and and a seventy five kg human. So even just looking at the formula, you know that you need some more data such as the mass of the earth and the distance between the earth and the human, right? So this is pretty standard data which you do not need to know, but this will always be provided to you in the same way. So if a person is standing on the surface of the earth, then the separation between the earth and that person would really just be the radius of the earth. Right, so that is a pretty standard value which is given as 6.4 into 10 to the 6 meters and similarly the mass of the earth is given as 6 into 10 to the 24 kg and when we're working with this we also know that the second mass is the mass of the human which is 75 kg. Now sometimes you'll see a somewhat alternate version of the Newton's law of gravitation that equation that we saw above so sometimes this larger mass is called uppercase m and the smaller mass is called lowercase m in the problems that we'll be seeing you'll see that for small uh, we use lowercase m for something like a rock a satellite and we use this uh, uppercase m for very large objects like planets or stars or whatnot right so now if we want to calculate the gravitational force of attraction so we can use this again so g m m upon r square let me first just write this so g m m upon r square right you can either write this or m1 m2 that's totally up to you so g is 6.67 into 10 to the negative 11 capital m is 6.0 into 10 to the 24 right that's the mass of mother earth the mass of the human is 75 and the separation between them is the radius of the earth which is 6.4 into 10 to the 6 and don't forget the square so now again we can calculate this uh, force of attraction and this turns out to be 0.375 
732 Newton correct to 3 SF or you could also write this correct to 2 SF. Now the idea is and I talked about this briefly the last time as well that what F really is is the gravitational force of attraction but when we're talking about the earth and anything which is on the surface of the earth or sufficiently close then that is really the weight of that object. So what we have just calculated up till now is the weight of this 75 kg object and this is not something which is very new to us although this is a slightly different way of doing the same thing which previously we would have done like this. So to calculate the weight of this object we would have used W equals mg so the mass is 75 g is 9.81 and if you calculate this this turns out to be 736 newton correct to 3 sf so a small uh, deviation between both of these answers is due to rounding off right so these are basically the weights that we have calculated so the gravitational force that any object experiences due to the earth is really the weight of that object so let's just formalize this so gravitational force exerted by earth on an object is its weight. So also bringing in, uh, bringing in one last uh, one important observation from last time is that this force is what is being applied by the earth on that object and also by the object on that earth right so uh, it exists in a action reaction pair one last idea I want to touch on is the idea of an inverse square law which the gravitational force obeys right so Newton's law of gravitation is actually an example of an inverse square law since the gravitational force is inversely proportional to the square of the separation right so as the distance increases the gravitational force decreases but that would have also been the case if you didn't have the square here so this uh, what this shows is as the distance increases the gravitational force falls off very fast right so let's uh, have a look at this concept with the help of a graph so this graph shows exactly that let me just zoom into this so for example if the force is F at some distance R between the masses right as you double the distance R because of this inverse proportion if this radius uh, sorry not the radius this, uh, the separation if that doubles because of that square the gravitational force would become one-fourth of its value right that's how inverse square works so if one thing increases by some factor the other thing decreases by a square of that factor so this increased by a factor of two so this thing decreased by a factor of four it became one-fourth of its original value similarly if from r to 3r if the distance triples right if it increases by a factor of three the force falls off by a factor of 9 right so it becomes 1 ninth of its original value and then the trend goes on so in the next video we'll be looking at solving some of the uh, questions related to the idea of gravitational forces